This is breaking news. Right now, Governor Cuomo is at Chelsea Piers, where he will sign the Gender Recognition Act bill into law. The measure seeks to remove discriminatory burdens on New Yorkers trying to change their sex designation on government records. Let's listen in. And that equality is our goal and nothing less. But if you think back 51 years ago, Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera weren't there. They're, they're not names we know because it was easy. They fought and they fought and they fought and they pushed. And they didn't just fight in the streets. They fought by getting people into places of power who mattered, who would make a difference, who we could trust to make a difference. And I look right in the front row and I see Danny O'Donnell. <laughs> Prime example. We are where we are today because Danny O'Donnell and Tom Dwayne and Brad Hoylman and names like Bronson are names that you now know because of the work that you did, because of the work that we all did. And in 2010, when this young guy became our governor, I think we were all a little bit nervous, at least I was. We didn't know how this was going to go. But almost immediately after he was there, he started pushing for us, for us, and working with Danny and working with Tom and working with Brad Hoylman. He started lobbying the Republicans who controlled our state Senate. And 10 years ago today, 10 years ago today, he signed the bill that brought marriage equality to New York. <laughs> And sitting five rows back, I see Michael Sabatino, who was able to marry the love of his life because the man I'm going to introduce signed that law. And next year, I'm going to get to marry the love of my life because the man who signed that law. And we thought, wow, that's great, but what's next? Well, what's next was gender. What's next was the ban on conversion therapy. What's next, when we couldn't get laws through the state Senate and the Assembly because the Senate blocked them, he signed executive orders. And that led to the passage of those laws and the signing into law. And even in a pandemic, we got the Child Parent Security Act because of their work, because we had a governor willing to sign those laws. We got Walking While Trans, the end of the conversion therapy ban. The end of, of the conversion therapy. And today we take that next step. And we take it because of the tireless work of the people who are sitting here, among them Donna Lieberman of the NYCLU, Ewan Renfro, a hero at the Empire Justice Center, the brilliant and tireless Charlie Arrowwood, whose legislative genius got us here today, Tanya Walker. Tanya Walker, my sister by another mother, who never stops, never stops, and is co-chair of Equality New York, Jose Abrigo, Mateo Guerrero, and where's Melissa? Where's Melissa? There is she, Melissa Sklars, mentor to so many of us, hero to all of us, and then there's Christina Herrera. Whose advocacy on behalf of the Trans Latina Network will never stop, I know, and who is so important to all of us and whose work has to be acknowledged. But that brings us here today as we take the next step. And I am, you know, the guy talks about making New York a beacon, a beacon of hope to LGBT people around the world. And we're going to take the next step, and I am proud to introduce the man who's got the pen and who's going to make it happen. The governor of the state of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kirsten Browdy, what a champion, what a force. Let's give her a big round of applause.
Did you hear what Kristen said about me? <laughs> Young man, that's what she said. I choose to interpret that as a current statement as opposed to a prior statement. Young man, thank you very much. Nicer things have never been said. Let's give Kristen another round of applause. Let's give our great Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer a round of applause. A pioneer when it was hard, Tom Duane, God bless you. Danny O'Donnell, when it was hard, a pioneer, God bless you, Danny. We have with us Melissa DeRosa, secretary to the governor, who's worked on these efforts. They give her a round of applause. <laughs> Linda Lacewell, our supervisor, Department of Financial Services. <laughs> Kathy Marino Thomas, thank you for all the hard work. Evan Wolfson, thank you. Ross Levi, thank you so, so much. <laughs> Judith, Judith Kazin Windsor, God bless you for spending your life. Judy Gray Owens, thank you all. Thank you all and everyone in this room. This was really a, a group effort. Everything we've done, it doesn't happen otherwise. But today is such a beautiful day coming into New York. The sun is shining. It's a memorable day, the 10th anniversary of marriage equality. <laughs> the celebration of Pride Week. And it's a great time in New York generally as we emerge from that dark COVID winter, that winter of isolation and of fear uh, and of withdrawal. It's unlike anything we've ever gone through before because it was devoid of humanity. You couldn't see people, you couldn't touch people. You're afraid of one another. And the trauma it did, the pain it caused, I think it's going to be a long time before we even understand how damning it was. But it's a different day today. And we're out, and we're about, and New York is back, and restaurants are open, and people should go out and celebrate. I declared yesterday that the COVID emergency was over, the restrictions are gone. And it couldn't be at a better time because the time to enjoy each other is here. We get ready to celebrate the July 4th weekend. And I love the July 4th weekend because it forces you to think about and remember uh, what this is all about, our founding fathers commemorating the birth of the American idea. I call it an idea, because that's what it was. It was an idea. It was aspirational, what they were talking about. The founding of America set a bold, new, audacious ideal that we had to perfect. They never said, we declare it today as a reality. They said, this is the goal, in essence, for America. And we've spent 245 years trying to reach that goal, trying to reach the promise of freedom, of opportunity for all, the promise of equality. And it's still a work in progress. The day the Founding Fathers signed the Declaration of Independence, 13 colonies all had slavery, but they were celebrating the promise of freedom of, and equality. The day they signed the Constitution, they say that black people are three-fifths what white people are, but they're celebrating equality and freedom. Women didn't have the right to vote. So America has always been a work in progress. It took 100 years for blacks to achieve freedom from slavery. It took 144 years for women to have the right to vote from the day they signed that document. It wasn't until 1969, almost 200 years, that Stonewall heralded the cry of equality and freedom for the LGBTQ community. <laughs> Thank you.
And as we write the story of America and our prog progress towards the goal of freedom and equality for all, each chapter begins. It begins with the courage to change and to challenge the status quo. And that's what is hard. It's hard to stand up and say, we can do better, we must do better. But we are New Yorkers. And we're proud, because when you look at that long line of marches towards equality and freedom, so many of them started right here in New York, and the chapters began being written here in New York. The women's rights movement started here in Seneca Falls. Civil rights movement, NAACP, started here in the great state of New York. Workers' rights started at the Shirtwaist Factory Fire here in New York. LGBTQ rights started Stonewall here in New York. <laughs> Marriage equality, 10 years ago, marked an historic chapter of progress. Remember where we were. Marriage was not legal for non-heterosexual couples. So the nation said, we offer you civil unions, almost like marriage. We offer you domestic partnerships, almost like marriage, but not exactly marriage not full equality. It was like saying, you are three-fifths of a man, three-fifths of equality, almost equal, but not quite. And New York said no. Almost equal was not good enough, because almost equal is not equal, and we demand <laughs> equality. We will not accept that love between an LGBTQ couple and a heterosexual couple is any different. That the love in the LGBT sense is any less profound or deep or real. And we fought, and people said the fight was impossible. It was too much too fast. It was unobtainable. Society wasn't ready. You're being unreasonable, we said no. We said we would accept nothing less, we would organize, we would fight, nothing less was fair. We were right, and we won, and the people in this room did it. And now let me speak from New York arrogance. When New York does something, it's different than when most other states do something. Because when New York State does something, it sets a precedent. It is a clarion call that goes all across the nation. And when we passed marriage equality, it was a clarion call for equality. We made that statement, and then the burden fell to the other states, where they now had to defend their inequality. The federal government had to defend its inequality. And inequality is indefensible because it violates America's aspirational promise and ideal. Ultimately, the Supreme Court had no choice but to affirm the New York precedent. And I want to take a moment to praise those legislators who stood up and took that vote because it was a hard one. And we won that vote, never forget, not with just Democrats. We won that vote because Republicans were strong enough to vote on principle and come across the aisle. <laughs> Senator Saland, we say thank you. Those senators who then were reviled by their party for what they did. And they knew they were going to be reviled by their party. And they all ultimately lost their seats. 
but they knew they stood for justice. God bless that type of elected official who will give up their office because it's the right thing to do. And then what's even better is we didn't stop. We didn't say, well, we did the impossible. That's enough. We're now going to rest. No. We were invigorated by the victory. And we built on it. And we said, we still haven't accomplished full equality. So we're going to go. And we kept moving. And we passed gender. And we banned conversion therapy. And we reformed the adoption process. And we banned the gay and trans panic defense. And we repealed walking while trans. And we named the first day park after Marsha Johnson. And we appointed the first openly LGBTQ judge to the state's highest court. And we required insurance companies to cover fertility requirements for LGBTQ couples. And then, after much opposition, and with the great effort of the people in this room, even with everything we did, we had tremendous opposition when we went to pass surrogacy for LGBTQ families, but we fought and we won. Thank you. America is a work in progress. But New York leads the way. It's our courage that keeps pushing for change and pushing that dream of equality and taking that next step forward. Today, I will sign the Gender Recognition Act. The gender recognition is the next step forward. <laughs> The Gender Recognition Act eliminates barriers that undermine the health, safety, and equality of people because of their gender. It affirms basic human dignity, and it ends discrimination. It adds a gender-neutral marker X as an option for birth certificates and all official documents. It allows parents to change their name on birth certificates and allows each individual to identify their own gender, not by any government-designed form. <laughs> New York State is the progressive capital of the nation. I believe that. My father believed that before me. It's our legacy. It is our destiny to continue that march towards progress, even when it's hard. It's our destiny to wage the war, to make the American aspiration an American reality. And when we make New York better, we make the nation better. We make it fairer. We make it more just. We make it more sweet. We make it more inclusive. When New York wins, we say we believe the strongest four-letter word is still love, not hate. <laughs> and after all these battles, we've learned one thing. Love wins every time. <laughs> New Yorkers, you have every right to be proud. And when you are proud, you have pride. Happy Pride Week. Happy Pride Month. Let's sign the bill. Thank you, and God bless you.
Again, Governor Cuomo just announced he signed the Gender Recognition Act in New York. The bill allows New Yorkers to identify their sex on state-issued identification with an X. The legislation aims to make it easier to change government documents such as driver's licenses and birth certificates. LGBTQ groups say it is a victory for transgender and non-binary residents. We'll have much more on CBSN New York beginning at 5 o'clock.